Hey everybody, my name is Patrick. You know me as Rig Papa on the Vera Community Forums. And in this second installment on getting started with Reactor, we are going to create a basic logic to turn on our home theater and set some stuff up inside of our home theater and then also be able to turn our home theater off. Uh, very simple Reactor. The purpose of this is just to get you familiar with conditions, uh, condition groups, and activities. So let's dig right in. So jumping straight to it, we have our reactor sensor that we created uh, in the previous video from installing a uh, reactor. And so I'm going to go ahead and go into that reactor sensor. And this is what it looks like when we first create a, a new reactor sensor. We have our root group here, um, which is the top level group that contains all other conditions. Um, conditions are grouped together. Uh, and then you apply a logic operation to those groups. I'll cover that a little bit more in a second. Um, but uh, there's always a root group. Every every uh, reactor sensor will have one group at the top level, and then you can have subgroups and conditions underneath it. So in the default configuration that you get with a new reactor sensor, uh, you have a group that has the same name that the reactor sensor was assigned when it was created, uh, and you have this one condition, which is just a comment that says, welcome to your new reactor sensor. We're going to go straight to the conditions tab. And the first thing we can do here on the conditions tab is uh, we can rename our reactor sensor and we're going to click on it and we're going to call it theater control and spelling is hard. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and click the save button here while I can. Uh, and before we move on, I want to talk a little bit about this one group and some of the controls on the page and just walk you through this. So this is basically what all reactor groups will look like. You'll have the conditions that have a white background, and then the reactor groups will have at the top level, they'll have a blue background. So this light blue black, uh, background is that of the of the root group. And then as we create more nested groups, they'll have different colors just to help you give you a visual cue as to how deep in the hierarchy you are. Most of the time you won't need to go very deep in the visual in the in the hierarchy to, to create your logic. But I don't know. You people can get pretty creative and you can do a lot of stuff. So we'll see what you come up with once you start getting familiar with it and uh, and you spread your wings a little. Um, up here next to the uh, next to the name uh, is a series of controls, and this basically determines uh, how this group is going to be handled and the conditions within it. Um, this disable button basically just turns the group on and off. So if you hit this and make it red, that group is now disabled and a disabled group has no effect. So if you have multiple groups in the system, um, you can disable any one group while you're debugging your logic. Um, this cluster here determines what logical operation is going to apply to the conditions in the group. And the default is AND. Uh, and what that means is that in order for the group to have a true status, in order for the group to be true, all of the conditions in the group, this condition and this condition and this condition, if I create more conditions here and I add all these conditions, all four of these conditions as I'm showing right now would have to be true for this group to be true. All right. If I select or, then that means any one of these conditions only needs to be true, one or more. So if none of the conditions is true, then the group will be false. But if any of the conditions is true, the group will be true. And then XOR means that uh, only one of these conditions can be true for the group to be true. If none is true or if more than one is true, then the group itself will not be true. And then finally, there's the null condition, which is a, or the null operator, which is a special, uh, special use for modular logic. And I'm going to cover that later on. You can also invert the sense of the test if it's easier to think about your logic one way, but then you find out you want it backwards where you're actually using it, you can hit not and it'll be and it'll invert the sense of the test. So let's let me get rid of these extra comments that I added in and let's just get straight to creating our home theater setup. I'm going to choose a device state type condition here. You can see all these different condition types that Reactor currently supports. I'm going to choose device state because we're going to be testing the state of a virtual switch that I've created called Watch Movie. Uh, I'm going to go then to the device menu and find Watch Movie on there. It's this device number eight right here. And then you can see the rest of these fields all updated. On Vera, 
devices have state variables. And so fundamentally what device state conditions do is they test the value of a state variable to see if it matches a value you're looking for. A state variable on Vera is basically a, it's storage for some information about the device that Vera stores. So for example, for a switch, it will store target, a variable called target, which is the state that you want the switch to be in. If you're on the user interface, for example, and you hit the on button on the user interface, then the target variable will go to the value 1, indicating that we want the switch to be on. In the background, then, Vera is sending a command to the device. If it's a Z-Wave device, it's sending a Z-Wave command out to it to tell it to turn on. When the device then reports back that it's on, whatever status that device reports, Vera takes that status and puts it in its status variables. And for a switch, the on-off state is actually called status, and it stores the status of the switch in the status variable, either 0 for off or 1 for on. Now, how do you know? Let's look at this menu. How do you know which of these to check? There's a bunch of variables here, and you don't really know what to look at. And when you're first getting started with Vera, this is one of the learning curves you kind of have to climb up. Uh, is knowing what variables do what and where to get them and all that. But there's an easier way to figure this out uh, for right now. And that is, is that if we click this chevron here, it pops up a menu of all of the different uh, predefined um, triggers that you could use if this was a scene trigger. So this is the same list of triggers that would be available if you were creating a scene and using this device to to trigger a scene on Vera. And so it basically that uh, functions as a shortcut here for us to get to what we want. And we want to check to see if the switch is on. So we're going to go ahead and choose that. And now we can see that what it's done is it's pre-populated our fields for us. It's chosen the right variable, the right state variable, which is status in the switch power one service. And we're going to test to see if it's equal to one. So this is how we test to see if our virtual switch called watch movie is on. That's the whole test. That's it. We're done. Now, because this condition is alone in this group and it's an AND group, then when this condition goes true, so this group will go true as well. It will follow the state of the, because there's only one condition. So there's, there's nothing else to and it with. So with the one condition in there, it's going to be the group state will be the same as the condition state. And it so happens that this is the root group. It's the top level group in the reactor sensor, which means that the tripped or untripped status of the reactor sensor is going to follow whatever this group state is. I'll cover more about that later. But I just want you to know that basic fact because we're going to be able to see that up here. So here is our view again, our, our device list view. And if I go to watch movie, which is the switch that we're looking at, here's our reactor sensor down here. If I go to watch movie and turn it on, the reactor sensor trips. And if I go back here to watch movie and turn it off, the reactor sensor untrips. So there, actually, if you've done this with me, you've just created your first condition you and made it react to something. The reactor sensor is actually seeing it and reacting to it. So that's a good start. Let's have it actually do something. And that'll be even more exciting than just basically blinking an LED, which is what we've done uh, in a virtual sense here on the dashboard. So let's go into the Activities tab. And over here on the Activities tab, we currently have two activities because, let me go quickly back to conditions, because we have this group, the root group, called theater control, we have activities when theater control is true and when theater control is false. So whenever a group goes, whenever you create a group, there will be two activities created for that, one for when the group goes true and one for when the group goes false. And you can put the activities in there that are supposed to happen when the conditions inside that group are met. So when theater control is true means our virtual switch is on and so we want to set up our home theater so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add an action I clicked add action there and I'm gonna say device action and the first thing I'm gonna do is I want to make sure that our theater I'm gonna choose the theater cove lights and I want to make sure that our theater cove lights are on at a pleasant level so I'm gonna choose theater cove light set dimming level to 33 all right, so that is how I create an action. You'll see this interface is very similar to the condition uh, to the condition editor interface. You're just kind of working your way from left to right, getting the fields 
filled in. What are these buttons over here? Well, this little running man icon is uh, just a test button basically for this action. If you're not sure if you've got the right level or you're not sure if you even have the right action or whatever, um, you can fill out the condition or fill out the action here and then hit this button to test it and it will actually do whatever the action is directed to do on that device and you can see if it works correctly. These up and down arrows that are currently grayed out, um, those move this action up and down in the list of actions so that you can change the order that the actions uh, execute in. And of course there's only one action, you can't move it up or down right now. But we'll see in a minute when I create another action, you'll see those icons become available. And then of course the X is the delete. Um, let me add another action here. We're going to turn on, in addition to that, we're going to turn on our Onkyo receiver. That's simple. That action is stands alone and it has no parameters here. So notice here's the action. This action has a parameter, right? Set dimming level. Set it to what? Well, we're going to set it to 33%. This action has no parameters. Just turn the device on. That's it. So now we can see our, our arrows are lit here because we only have two actions. The only thing we can do with this one is move it up. And the only thing we can do with this one is move it down. It's not possible to move this action up, of course. And we're still able to delete it. And we now also, let's say, we want to also make sure that our Onkyo receiver, like that right here, we want to make sure our Onkyo receiver is set up on our DVD or Blu-ray player. Um, so we're going to add another action for that. And I'm going to go ahead and click Save. And there we are. So now we have our three actions for when we turn the theater on. We're going to set the light dimming level to 33%. We're going to turn the Onkyo receiver on, and we're going to make sure the input for the Onkyo receiver is the DVD. Let's go play. We're going to go over here. We've got our reactor sensor that we can see. We've got our watch movie button. Let's mash it and see what happens. Okay, so the reactor sensor tripped, and look here. The theater cove light went to 33%, and the Onkyo receiver is on. And if we go into the Onkyo receiver's controls here, we can see that it's on DVD right cool all right so that was easy right that's not that bad you can very quickly go in and create a condition and a set of actions right not not too bad at all um, now let's go ahead and turn watch movie off and you can see our reactor sensor on trips but uh, but the theater lights are still on and the receiver is still on well reactor doesn't assume anything reactor doesn't assume that just because you turn something on in one activity you automatically want to turn it off in another activity. You have to be explicit and you have to name each step of each activity. So we didn't do that. We only said, we only gave reactor activities to run when the switch was turned on. We didn't tell it to do anything when the switch is turned off. Let's go back and do that. Before we do that, I'm going to go here and just reset these. So the next time we come out here, they're all off. All right. And it's all set for us to actually test. And then we're going to go in here. And we're going to go back to activities. And now, okay, so I've got three activities here that I did to turn everything on. I have to do at least two activities to turn everything off. So I can recreate those actions very easily just by hitting the add action button and going ahead and, you know, doing everything I, you know, specifying all the fields and everything that I need to do. Um, or I can perhaps more quickly just say copy from theater control two. And true and it copies those actions from one to the other so now I have sort of a template down here um, and but instead of set dimming level now I'm gonna turn this to on or off I'm just gonna fix that and I can say I want it off and then here we want the Ankyo receiver off I just edit that and then we don't care what input it's on so I'm just gonna get rid of that task and we're good to go alright so now we have a set of actions to do when we turn the receiver on, which is the dimming level, uh, or sorry, when we turn the switch on, we're going to set the dimming level to 33, turn the receiver on, and set the input. And then down here, when we uh, when we turn the virtual switch off, we're going to turn the theater lights off and turn the receiver off. Let's go try it. Switch on. Reactor sensor on. Cove lights on. Unke receiver on. Perfect. We're not going to go in and look at the uh, state and whether it's in DVD input or whatever, because it was that way last time. We don't need to look at it. All right. Now let's test and see if we turn off the right way. Let's see. Switch off. 
Reactor sensor untripped over here, cove lights are off, and the Onkyo receiver is off. So that's it. We've just made a basic sort of functional reactor that um, can respond to a virtual switch. It could have been any device, really. Um, it could actually even have been the Onkyo receiver itself. When the Onkyo receiver goes on, turn on the lights, do a bunch of other stuff, whatever it is. We just use a virtual switch to make it easy and, you know, straightforward to look at and easy to control. But, um, you know, that's that's about as complicated as it is to create a basic reactor sensor. You just uh, set up some, some conditions and you set up your actions for those conditions. It's fairly straightforward. Now, there's a lot underlying that. There's a, there's a lot more options that you can choose. There's a lot more logic you can bring in and you're going to come up with some complicated things like, oh, when this happens and this happens and this happens and then after this happens, you want to do that. Sure, your logic's going to get complicated, but the basic flow is the same. Create your conditions, create your activities, and you'll go back and forth between those two things, basically just combing it out, getting more and more refined as you go until you get your functionality exactly the way you want it, and that's it. So um, let's do one more thing here just for fun, because we have the time. Let's go back into our reactor sensor. I know this video is getting a little long, um, but let me just do one more thing. Uh, we're in our theater. When we turn the theater off, we don't want to be standing in the middle of a dark room. So uh, I would like to actually have the system wait about a minute or so before I turn the lights off. Very simple. I'm going to add an action. I'm going to choose delay. And I'm just going to put in, this is delay in seconds. I'm just going to put in 60 right here for 60 seconds. Now, I need to tell it, I need to tell it that, you know, what we're going to be delaying. There's no tasks after this. So that's everything here is executed in order. So if the last thing is ex that executes is a delay, it doesn't really do anything for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my lights on or off task down. So now the order is turn the Onkyo receiver off right away, turn the or delay for 60 seconds, then turn the lights off. All right. Very simple. Now, we're going to do this here on the video. I'm not going to wait, sit and make you wait for 60 seconds for the lights to go off. I'm going to reduce this delay to just six seconds for the for the uh, test run here. So let's save that. We're going to go back out here. I'm going to go turn my switch on as I have before, and you can see the reactor sensor trips. The lights come on, the receiver comes on, and we're good to go. Now, this time when we turn our switch off, the Onkyo receiver will go off right away but the lights are still on, and then a couple of seconds later, boom, the lights will go off. So that's it for this video. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up down below, and uh, if you'd like to know when new videos come out, hit that subscribe button, and if you'd like an email when new videos come out, uh, hit the little bell that's next to the uh, subscribe button down there. Also, if you have comments about the video, um, anything you know, anything to do with that, uh, feel free to make them in the in the uh, comments section down below. Uh, but if you have questions about Reactor or suggestions for uh, things that should be done with Reactor or or even suggestions uh, for future videos, I would prefer that you make those. Uh, in the reactor category over on the Vera community forums. So please head over to community.getvera.com. Uh, you can sign up for an account there um, to get logged in and uh, and join the conversation. And please make your suggestions and, uh, and ask your questions because there's lots of helpful people there on all kinds of subjects. Uh, again, my name is Rigpapa, R-I-G-P-A-P-A, -P -A, over on the Vera community forums. And uh, I'll be happy to hear from you over there and, uh, and answer your questions over there as well. So thanks again for joining on this video. Uh, next video, I am planning on doing a, uh, an experiment with motion-controlled lights, which is a very common home automation task. So we'll get into something that's, uh, that's quite typical of the first thing people usually want to do with their home automation system. Uh, thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you next time.